know, but it was it was a great job. You know, it's, it's you just fly around, you feel free. You know, a lot of people look down on you, a lot of people envy you, a lot of people, you know, would spit on you as soon as you know, you don't look at you, and uh, which didn't bother me because you know, as far as I was concerned, I was part of a whole different culture. You know, there was the civilians. And then you have the police, the, mil the paramilitary, and then you have criminals, and then you have outlaws. And bike messengers fall under the, the realm of outlaw. Mothers. Uh, back in 87, Ed Koch uh, proposed the bike ban, banning bikes from 59th Street to 34th Street uh, along 5th Park and Madison Avenues, which basically was an attack on, you know, associate economic group called the Bicycle Messengers, you know, because it didn't affect commuters because it wasn't during commuting time. And for you to single out one group and go, this is the problem with traffic, or this is the problem, the big danger in New York, uh, was just unfair and unreasonable. Well, there was an effort to uh, regulate uh, bike messengers. I don't remember the details, uh, but uh, it uh, provided for registration and insurance and um, the bill came before me for signature after it had been passed by the City Council and I decided uh, that uh, it was too onerous, too penalizing in a criminal way uh, bikers and uh, that I didn't want to uh, pass legislation, sign legislation that would give uh, these bikers, if they were convicted of uh, violations, uh, criminal records. Messengers are overwhelmingly uh, uh, young men and women uh, from the minority communities, and they have lots of problems now. I was not going to add uh, to their uh, future employability uh, by making them uh, subject uh, to criminal sanctions, which that particular legislation did. And so I vetoed it. I don't know uh, whether they passed subsequently legislation uh, that eliminated uh, those uh, criminal sanctions uh, or not. And I don't know what the state of legislation is in the city today. I'm Sergeant Gary Weaver of the Manhattan Traffic Task Force Bicycle Squad. We're part of the New York City Police Department. I've been doing this work for the last year. And primarily what we do is uh, go after bike messengers who violate the law. They go through red lights, go the wrong way on the street, or ride on the sidewalk. When any of these three main conditions exist, we stop the bicycle messenger, obtain their identification, and issue them a summons. Yeah, we've had chases sometimes on occasion. Uh, they've gone on for a long period of time. One, one individual we chased started at Midtown, so went all the way downtown. He was cutting through streets, and the only reason we were able to keep up with him is we used the radio, and we had different officers come different routes and intercept him, and we just stayed with him, and finally he just wore out. And that's how we were able to get him. The sheer numbers and the use of the radio was able to overcome his ability. was he went through uh, two consecutive red lights at 40th Street, rolled halfway into the intersection and proceeded through the red light. At 41st, which is a marginal street, he went straight through. The fee is $100. He has 15 days to plead either guilty or not guilty. My wages are like $20 more a week than a ticket's gonna cost me. Bicycle messengers feel that they own the road and should be out there and the motorists feel that the bicyclist has no place on a city street. So it's an uneasy truce that exists most of the time between the bicyclist and the motorist. Stop your bike. All right, All right here's the summons and your identification. All right, Jim, please. All right. You gotta follow the same rules as the car. Yeah, all right. 
many times. These bicycle messengers are way too fast for us. And uh, we sort of have a philosophy in the bicycle squad that they'll always be out here, and so will we. So if we don't get them today, they're always going to be out there tomorrow again. They don't get enough from me on TV, man. Oh, know. again? Hey, look at that. This guy, you see this guy on TV? No, he got it. So what you, what's up? Now you got the, the famous kid L on tape. I am the best in New York, I know that. Let me tell you something about being the best in New York. It's not about being this fast. Like, yeah, I am fast and all that, but it's not about being fast. It's about having a sense of direction and where you're going. If you know where you're going and you know how to get there, that's the most important thing. You ain't got to be fast. Cause if you was fast, for that you go to the Tour de France and, and earn some big money. You right? What can you say? 74. Come in, 74. Can you pick that phone up and call me, please? Now, am I, am I the best messenger? I'm the best dispatcher in the world. See that right there, B? I know all that. All that right there, all that. Technically, the cops do own the streets. But in reality, we own the streets. The troopers out here, the, the messengers out here, we own the streets. I'm flying down 6th Avenue, these two cops they, on bicycles, you know, they got them little bullshit Fuji bikes with the, with the knobby wheels, all fat and all that. I'm flowing, I'm flowing, you know. I got light speed titanium frame, you know what I'm saying, white industry hubs, and you know, my, my, my bike is like maybe 20, 20, 21 pounds, flying. So I stopped at a light and they pull up on me and say, yo, pull over. I said, for what? They say, you ate like six lights. I was like, all right, where you want me to pull over? So when they looked to tell me where to pull over, I just jetted. So they started chasing me. So I'm like this, just riding. And I would look back and I see them, <laughs> they're going like this, right? They're trying to catch up to me. And I'm just riding hard, looking at them. And I would ride to every corner and stop and wait till they catch up. I'll wait till they like about two car lengths, then I'll take off again and make them keep doing it for a couple of blocks. And then when I'm far away, the, you know, the fat cop is already, nah, he done gave up. All the cookies and pork chops fell out of his pockets. And um, the other cop, he's like sort of determined to try to, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'll be making fun of them at the corner, like, you ain't gonna catch me, you're not gonna catch me. It's been around since the 1890s. And they were riding track bikes on the cobblestone with fucking horses. I saw a picture of a guy who was on a track bike. And his face had big lines under his eyes. He looked all grouchy. It looked like he had like bike tights on and shorts, a sweatshirt. He looked just like fucking a 90s messenger. But man, he must have had it rough. It's been around a while. The track bike is the original bicycle. Back when a bicycle was first created, the Velocipede, it was a fixed gear. There were no cables or brake pads or any of that to put onto a bicycle. It just it was a fixed cog, and you locked your legs to stop it. When you spin this thing, it continuously spins. So if you don't know what you're doing and you try to fly on it, it'll throw you like a horse. <laughs> 